So welcome to this webinar about creating positive habits that can really transform not just your career, but also your whole life. I mean, that is the purpose of these, um, these uh, sessions. They're really meant to be sessions that help you really work on all parts of your, your life. So let me just, uh, let's go forward. Motivation, Jim Rohn is someone that I, um, I respect quite a bit. Uh, he's written this, motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. And, and it's really essential that, um, because habits often shape our life, what you repeatedly do, that is what you spend time thinking about and doing each day, ultimately forms the person you're going to be. Whether you are, um, you know, uh, in, uh, whether you're preparing for an exam or whatever, um, it's all linked to the kind of person you are, the things you believe and the personality that you portray and your values. Um, and I really believe that regular things like sleep, exercise, a, a healthy diet, an organized schedule, and what we call mindfulness um, are just a few examples of a positive habit. And if done regularly, can improve your work, your relationships, and your mental health. So let's just move on. So what are your habits? Tell me, you know, I don't know, uh, there's only, if those who are here, could perhaps just write down what some of your habits are. You know, is it uh, in terms of positive and um, perhaps not so positive habits? Why don't you just put on the chat box some of the habits? I mean, these are some of the habits that, um, that you could have, things like stress eating, which is a little bit a negative habit, and things like you go into the kitchen and you, you, you see stuff and you want to eat it straight away. Um, a more positive habit could be one like morning meditation, um, drinking one glass of water, right? You know, every hour is probably every work sort of between nine and five or nine and seven. Um, you know, you, you, a good habit would be to drink about um, 10 glasses of water a day um, so that you have about two liters of water. So is that one of your habits? Um, and I've, and so perhaps you could write down some of your habits. What are the habits that you've noticed in your everyday activities? Um, what are some of the, the sort of bad habits? <laughs> and maybe write down some good habits. So I'll just, just wait for that a bit. So we've had a few examples of them written now. Let's just move on. So watching YouTube, for example, um, drink uh, before sleep. That's probably not one of the positive ones. Drinking coffee first thing in the morning. That is a habit that I have, certainly. Um, I don't watch YouTube necessarily, but you could just binge on social media, look at your phone. Uh, one of the things you could have maybe habits that help you sleep or you have to do before you you do something next. So when you think of habits, the, is it, the, the question really is, is it possible to create new habits? Yes or no? Um, so it'd be nice to get a few yeses or nos in the chat box. Um, and Anyone want to have a go at seeing if it's if you believe it's possible to create new positive habits? Yeah, I've heard private yes, yeah. Um, the the process of building a habit can be divided into I I think four simple steps. Okay, um, and 
they and and actually this is something that has been proven. Um, so I it's there's something called a queue uh, where you see it. You it the uh, the queue the craving, the response and the reward. Okay, if you look at it at, in a semicircle, so a queue is a like a trigger. Your brain triggers your brain to initiate a behavior. For example, if you are stressed, then that leads to st stress eating. So stress is the cue, okay? It's a bit of information that predicts what's gonna happen next. Um, craving is sort of a motivational force behind every habit. And without such level of motivation or desire, you have no reason to act. So we don't crave the habit, but we crave what it delivers, what it makes us feel like. Um, for example, you're not motivated by brushing your teeth. Uh, in fact, you might think such a pain, but you are motivated by the feeling of a clean uh, palate, you know, a clean mouth. Um, and cravings really depend, uh, differ from pe person to person. And people are not motivated by the same cues. So for example, a gambler is motivated in a different way to someone who doesn't gamble. A response, which is where you say, I want it, it's the actual habit you perform, which can take the form of a thought or an action. Um, and if a particular action requires more physical or mental effort than you're willing to spend on it, then you won't do it, okay? But your response also depends on your ability. It sounds simple, but the habit can only happen if you're capable of doing it. Okay, so if you want, you, you really need to want something in order to do it. So a, a habit doesn't form unless, um, you know, you've got that. Um, a reward is also similar where um, a reward has to do with, again, you know, if it's worth it and you get your reward, then you, you are more likely to, to do something. Okay. Um, if a, if a behavior is insuff, insufficient in any of these four stages, it'll not become a habit. So you really need, you can, for example, eliminate, eliminate the cue and you won't get the habit to ever start. Reduce the craving and you won't experience enough motivation to start acting. Um, if you make the behavior difficult, you won't be able to do it. And if the reward that you get from that habit doesn't satisfy whatever your desire is, then again, you're not likely to do it again in the future. So you need to have sort of all four steps in order to create a, a, a habit. And this will, the reason I'm saying this is because just the opposite is going to be how you overcome it, okay? So you can think of each law, if you count these four laws, as a lever that in influences our behavior. And when the levers are in the right positions, creating good habits is effortless, but when it's in the wrong position, it's not impossible, okay? So let's go on. So James Clear, who has written a book around habits, and it's a book worth reading, um, he says, sometimes success is less about making good habits easy and more about making bad habits hard, okay? And how you would break a habit, um, you would literally invert the, invert, uh, the, um, the, the, the other habits. So for example, let me, let me just go back to that slide. Um, so you could invert the first law, for example, the Q, i.e. make it invisible. So instead of it being visible, you make it invisible. If you invert the second law, which is the craving, you make it unattractive. The third law is about response. That means instead of making it easy, you make it difficult. An inversion of the fourth law, which is the reward, um, if it's not satisfying, then, you know, that's how you could break a bad habit. So let's just go. So first of all, 
I'd like you to take a sheet of paper and identify a habit you want to, ch to change. So, and if you feel free enough to put it on, in the chat box, then name it, you know, name the habit. Maybe eating sweet, which is almost a habit. You know, after you might eat, uh, you might have lunch or dinner. And then after that, the cue, you know, you want, you eat sweets or you, you've got to have junk food or whatever, you know. So think, write down in the chat box a habit that you'd like to, to break, okay, to change. Um, and I'd like this to really be interactive. I really feel that we're going to get the most out of this if we just interactive. I'm not going to name any names, but if you can, if we can make this interactive, you'll find it useful. And what triggers you to the habit? So, so that is number two. Identify what the triggers are for that habit. So, for example, is it stress that makes you want to eat something sweet, or when you go to the kitchen, you have to snack? Um, what is identify the goal of your action? So, for example, it may be the reason you want to break the habit. Um, you might want to, so you might want to relieve the stress. Um, and what can replace the habit with to get the same reward? So, for example, you instead of eating sweets, you might munch on a few nuts, which are a bit more healthier and probably satisfy you and don't give you the sugar rush. So that's just an example of a habit. But write down some habits and we can, we can discuss them.